What's happening my beautiful people, how you all doing? It's me again, Derek Asamoa, and welcome to another video. So we're gonna continue from where we left off the last time. I had trials for Leicester City. The trial went very well. I thought I did enough to earn a professional contract, but my agent told me that they offered me a professional contract and it was just ironing out um, a couple of details in the contract. But for whatever reason, I never saw um, the contract and I went back to London feeling so disappointed because I put everything into this trial. I was so hurt and disappointed that I decided to, like, I'm done with football, I'm not going to play football anymore. I'm just going to concentrate on my future, try and sort myself out with education, try and sort myself out with work and just and just, and just live a normal life. I left Protec, I left Handel and Richmond, I wasn't playing no sort of football. Like I said, I didn't want anything to do with football, football for me was done. I've been trying since I was 15, it's been four years and I gave myself five years and it's almost five years now and I haven't I haven't, I haven't managed to achieve it. I'm almost 20 now. Things have just not worked out. So that was it for me for football. So for about two months, I didn't do anything to do with football. So I decided to um, get a job. I found, I found a job working on the building site. I was just basically, I'm not a builder. I was just basically like labor work, just carrying stuff up and down the stairs all day, trying to help like whatever the builders needed. I'll be up and down the stairs um, all day. So I found a job doing that, at least that gave me some money, that gave me some independence, do you know what I mean? I didn't enjoy it, it was, it was very painful getting up every morning to go to work and, and having to do that sort of work because that's not what I want to do, I want to be a professional footballer. So after two months, I was missing football so much, like um, I was starting to feel the urge to play um, football again, I was able to watch football again without feeling any type of way, do you know what I mean? The love for the game was coming back and I was missing playing it. So I decided to join a team called Slough Town and they were really, really struggling and on the verge of relegation. So I decided to, to join them and see if I can help them and um, help them stay in the league. I tried my best, I did my best, I scored some, some crucial I scored some crucial goals for them. But in the end, it wasn't enough. I had a laugh of football again, I quit my job. I said, there's no way I'm going to go back and, and, and work on a building site again. I just struggled with it, I couldn't get motivated. Um, to do to do work like that. So now it's the end of season, football's finished. Um, it's May time and I've just turned 20 years old. I'm trying to look for my, my next challenge in, in football. So my friend Arvin phoned me and asked me what I was doing about football. So I said to him, um, nothing might, I just finished the season with Slough Town. But unfortunately we got relegated and I want to see if I can um, step up again to professional football. So my friend Alvin went on to tell me that Northampton Town are holding an open trials in a week's time. Anybody can turn up. So I'm going if you want, you're more than welcome to come along with me. So I was like, yeah, 100%, I'd love to come. Thank you, thank you so much for, for giving me the heads up on this. I'm, um, I really, really appreciate it. And so this was going to be my last, last attempt to try and make it pro. So I'm going to put everything into it. I'm going to work my socks off this week before the trial. We put everything into that week. You could not have prepared any better for this trial. So anyway, trial day come along. Um, I think this is the middle of May sometime. I meet up with Alvin. We travel to Northampton together. We get the train up to Northampton and we make our way to Sixfield. We got to Sixfield and I was looking around and I was like, wow, this place is so amazing. I was just, I was just looking around and it was like, it, it was just perfect for football. It's not a huge, massive stadium, but it was just big enough. Do you know what I mean? We, I, I, just, I just fell in love with the stadium as soon as I saw Sixfield Stadium. The town was really nice. It wasn't too far away from away from London, it was far enough to get away from London, but it's not far enough that you can't just jump in the car or jump on the train and 40 minutes later, you're in London. Do you know what I mean? This, was, this would have been absolutely ideal for me. I just couldn't believe it. I was looking around, I was like, wow, this is unreal. So anyway, we made our way into the stadium and was met by some youth team players and they showed us where to go. So I took myself out onto the field and I was just looking around. I was so hypnotised by this stadium, I was just like, wow, what's going on? So I lost track where everyone was, I lost track of everything. One of the youth team players came and got me and said, I have to go to the changing room. I get to the changing room and I'm looking around and I'm seeing at least 50 players there. And I was thinking, oh my God, why is there so many players here? There's just too many players here. I'm just having a meeting in this small changing room. One of the coaches went on to explain that there's going to be four teams and there's going to be two matches got put into our teams and we headed out onto the pitch and i was like so excited i was like yes 
because at the end of the day, I thought we was going to go and play on the on the local field somewhere. I did not know that we was actually going to play on six fields. I just couldn't believe it. We went out, done our warm up. Game starts now. I'm all pumped up. I'm all psyched. I'm like, Derek, this is your chance. Come on, Derek. You can do it. I believe in you. So the game started. I felt so confident. I felt unbelievable because that adrenaline was flowing. Playing that sixth field, playing the stadium brought the best out of me. Within two minutes, I had scored already. I was like a different person. Every time I got the ball, I was beating one, two, three players. Putting the top corner, I was beating one, two, three players. Putting the bottom corner, I was unplayable. I was unstoppable. And at the end of the first half, I had scored six goals. And straight away, one of the coaches came up to me and said, you know what, we've seen enough. We would love to have you back for pre-season training. So I was like, I was so, so happy to hear those words come out of his mouth because normally after trials, they don't say nothing to you. They usually call you or send you a letter or send you an email or do something like that. So now all my attention is gone on to Alvin. I was just praying to God that Alvin does really well and he's invited back um, as well. But at the end of the trial, um, the coaches didn't say anything to anyone else. I was the only one that got um, told to come back. But they said in a meeting after that, they're going to be calling people. So I was really happy. But at the same time, I also wanted Alvin to, I also wanted Alvin to get through as well. I was so grateful for him because at the end of the day, he did not have to tell me about this trial. But when you have a good friend, when you have people that have your best interest at heart, they're not selfish. Whatever they get, they share it. If everyone was like that this world would be a better place. So anyway, on the train back, I'm all excited. I'm telling Alvin, Alvin, I can't believe that they've asked me to come back for pre-season on the spot. And I said to Alvin, don't worry, when I go out on that field, it's me and you out on that field. Anyhow, I get professional contract, I'm bringing you in 100%. Don't worry about that, 100%. So this trial was in the middle of May and pre-season is scheduled for somewhere towards the end of June. So I've got literally around six weeks or something to prepare myself for this season trial that I'm going to have in Northampton. But my preparation was on point. Unfortunately, I haven't didn't receive any letter or get house back for the trial, which was very disappointing. All I was focused on that month was getting my mind and body ready for pre-season because there's no way on earth I'm going to that pre-season and I'm not going to get a contract out. A week before pre-season, I received the itinerary what's going to be happening in pre-season. The first day of pre-season finally comes around and I'm all excited. I can't wait to get up to North Northampton. Woke up nice and early. I think training was scheduled to start about 10-ish. I already got my bag, jumped on the train. On the way to Northampton, I see some next guy there that I recognise from the trial. And I was like, was you at the, the trial at Northampton? He's like, yeah, yeah, I was. And I was like, are you, did they ask you to come back? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was just chatting to him and seeing where he's from. And he was also from London as well. So I said like, cool, at least I have someone that I can travel up with. So we just chatting. Yeah. We made our way to Moulton College. I think the training ground was at Moulton College. I was just so delighted to be, at, finally be at Northampton. I met up with all the coaches. I met up with all the players. Everyone seemed really nice. Everyone was really welcoming. And to my surprise, it was just me and this other guy that made it from, from the trial. So there was just the two of us, which made it extra special because there was over 50 players there and they only selected two, um, two players. So that filled me with a lot of confidence as well. First day of pre-season was really decent. We didn't do much running. It was more just trying to get um, people back in into the flow of things. I can remember second day of pre-season, they drove us to some next place. They drove us to some forest. But all I can hear is the players, everyone just moaning and groaning. So, Oh, I can't believe we're going, we're going to the forest. Why do we have to go to the forest? Like everyone was, I could see that everyone was hating life at the moment. And I was just dreading thinking, what the hell is, is this forest about? So I was a bit calm. Everything they throw my way, I know I'll be able to handle it, whether it's physically, endurance. I know, I know I'm more than capable of handling myself. We get to this forest and they put us all in groups, obviously from the fittest to the <laughs> to the slouch. So I got put in the last group because obviously they don't know my my fitness level. So I got put with the with the slow group. One group will go, then first second later, a second group, then a third, then a fourth. Then finally it was my group to go. The coach blows the whistle and we started off running. So we were just running and I was like, what's going on? Why are these why are these guys just jogging? So I didn't know what to do because I was not getting anything out of the run. They were running like it felt like they were running backwards. We saw the way the first group went and I saw the way the second group went and it just got slower, the pace got slower and slower and slower. So every time I try to run faster, I get a dirty look and I'm on trial here, I don't want to piss anyone off. I'm not going to stay with you guys because at the end of the day, I'm not going to get nothing out of this, this exercise. So I decided to just zoom off and leave them. 
So I just like on my bike, just running. This was meant to be like three quarter pace. I was just full on like running like like mad. So at the end of the race, I almost caught up with this first and second group. I overtook all the other groups and I knew that every time I went past people, they were just giving me the dirtiest look. And every time I went past a the group, they were like, who does, this, who does this guy think he is? You know what I mean? So I didn't care. I just, I gotta get this contract. I gotta get this contract. So I just finished the 5K with the second group and we just waited around until the, everyone else came. And I was just, I was just dreading it to, to hear what my group was going to say because I didn't do I've been put in this group, I have to stay with them and they're going to absolutely cuss me out. Once everyone got back and we had a little break, it's time for the second run. So everyone's like, oh. So anyway, the coach calls me, Derek, you need to get with the first group. You're not running with the, with the group at the back no more. So I was like, thank you, God, because I did not want to go anywhere near them. And at the same time, this was going to be a big um, test for me because the people at the front, were so fit. They were, um, they were the fittest people at the club, the people at the front. So I was like, oh my God, what have I done now? I was so happy about my performance. But at the same time, I was making so much enemies. People started calling me Kitsunui. And from then on, every time we have that run, no one wants to be in my group. I started getting a bit of hate. Do you know what I mean? I, still, I, I, did, I didn't understand it because all I wanted to do was just impress all I wanted to do. I'm working at my maximum. If you guys are not working at your maximum, that's not my problem. But I was just getting, I was getting the odd, the odd stare and people talking, talking behind my back. But I didn't care. I was here to do a job, and I wanted to impress the coach on the running in the football I was doing my thing I was working hard working my mind I've been doing prison for 10 11 days and it was going really well and I'm asking my friend um, if they said anything to you about signing he said no they haven't said anything to me about signing so I'm getting concerned because um, I heard that the team was going to fly out to to Ireland in a couple of days and no one said nothing to me so I'm like thinking this might be the the end of the road for me I was looking on the list and my name wasn't there, so I was like absolutely devastated. There had been a pre-season friendly plan for the next day. I got told that I was going to play in that game, but at the same time, I was absolutely devastated that I wasn't going to go to Ireland. So game day now, and I was playing up front with this player, I can't remember his name, but all I can remember was that he was really, really tall, and I was playing up front with him. The game starts and I was doing really well. I got into the game really quickly. I was doing little, little round of corners, little give and go. I was taking on players, I was whipping in crosses. I was doing really well. I was having um, quite a good game. 25 minutes into the game, I think a long ball must have been played up. This tall striker got played up to him. He leaped and flicked it on and there was so much grass to run into. Do you know what I mean? So I anticipated him winning. So straight away, all the defenders dropped off and the ball, they flicked it on behind the defenders. I just outpaced all the defense. The ball was still bouncing. And from about 20, 25 yards, I just hit the ball on a half volley and he just flew straight into the top corner. And I was just like, I just ran back to the halfway line that, like I just haven't scored a goal there, I just haven't scored a scream off right into the top bins. So anyway, the game restarted, the coach signals for substitution. So I didn't think it was gonna be, it was gonna be me that was getting taken off. The coach calls out my name, Derek. So I was like, oh my God, what the hell? I was only playing like 20, 25 minutes. What's going on? I haven't even, I haven't even given a chance. So anyway, my head was down, walked over to the coach and the coach put his arm around me and said that um, you took your goal really well, well done. And I said, thank you. And he asked me, do you have your passport? And I was like, um, yeah. And he's like, good. I want you to come to Ireland with us. <laughs> I looked at him, I just, I just had the biggest grin on my face. I was just like, 